When scuba diving Texans are asked to name their favorite dive site in the state, the big joke is to smile and say, Cozumel. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the Lone Star State has a magnificent coral reef system right out there in the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, it's one of our most iconic natural and cultural marine resources, and few places on planet Earth can match its diversity. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, calls it a secret coral garden in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm underwater filmmaker Paul Cater Deaton, and this expedition takes us to the National Reef of Texas, the Flower Garden Banks. Our journey begins here, where I live, Galveston, Texas, home to the oldest fire department, newspaper, and chamber of commerce in the state. And it has one of the most revered Mardi Gras celebrations in America. The architecture is captivating, a reminder of Galveston's roots as one of the greatest seaports and economic generators on the Gulf of Mexico. There's plenty of great food from Cajun and seafood to Tex-Mex, and, of course, barbecue, which makes for some very happy taste buds. It's a tolerant community. The vibe is very laid back. Ow. <laughs> and it's plenty quirky. Since it takes at least five hours to get there by boat, most dive trips are on liveaboards so that you can stay for a few days. Depending upon your point of departure, the flower garden lies between 70 to 130 miles offshore. The closest coral reefs from these are 400 miles away, off the Yucatan in Mexico. The vessel of our delivery to the flower garden is the Fling, a liveaboard based in Freeport, Texas. A hundred feet in length and driven by 1800 horsepower, this boat has been taking divers to the banks for decades. She comfortably sleeps up to 40 passengers and crew. Totally self-contained from galley and air conditioning to an onboard air compressor able to blend special breathing gases. In our case, it's oxygen-enriched nitrox. As the crew prepares fleeing for departure, we bathe our gear in a vat of chlorhexidine. This is a voluntary effort to prevent the spread of stony coral tissue loss disease. Emma Hickerson, research director for the Flower Garden National Marine Sanctuary, explains why this is important. Um, so what you're talking about is a recent initiative to encourage all divers at the Flower Garden Banks to de decontaminate their gear bef before going there. And that's because of the uh, stony coral tissue loss disease that has um, has been impacting the Florida Keys and 
has migrated south into other areas in the Caribbean. Um, we're crossing our fingers that it doesn't get to the flower garden banks. But one of the uh, considerations that has come out of the work that's been done in Florida and other areas is that there's potentially transmittal of the disease, the bacteria, um, through dive gear. So, and especially wetsuits, soft materials. Mm -hmm. So um, we proactively provided rinse tubs and decontamination um, solutions to the recreational dive boat that goes to the flower garden banks to, um, so that the recreational divers can decontaminate their gear. It's not a requirement we, um, at the moment, but we strongly encourage all divers to decontaminate their gear before going to the flower garden banks. This um, disease is very scary. It's wiping out reefs. And uh, now that you've seen the flower garden banks, um, the, it's very high coral cover. It's the, the highest in most of the Caribbean. Very large corals. And these are corals that have been living for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, and to lose them, we're not going to get them back in our lifetime or our children's lifetime or our grandchildren's lifetime. It's really sad to think about it that way um, if we lose corals. Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary is one of 14 federally designated underwater areas protected by NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. It is the only sanctuary site in the Gulf of Mexico. Sprawling, of course, because <laughs> Texas, it covers more than 50,000 acres. To the intrepid go the spoils. High waves and ripping currents demand a strong set of skills. Just getting there can be an adventure, but it's totally worth it. The Flower Garden and Stetson Banks include underwater coral communities that rise from the depths of the Gulf of Mexico atop three underwater mountains called salt domes. They were first discovered by fishermen in the early 1900s. The story goes that they named the place the Flower Garden because they could clearly see the colorful corals and sponges through the water. Once you submerge, you can see how accurate that name is. The underwater topography reveals ranges of mountainous corals punctuated by loads of sea life. There are more than 20 species of hard corals here. Fun fact, coral lives longer than any animal on Earth. Some grow to be 5,000 years old. Our dive schedule is rigorous. We get right to work, making five dives a day. The typical dive trip comprises two morning dives on the west bank of the flower garden. During lunch, we move to the east bank and make another day dive, one at dusk, and another after dark. We move to Stetson Bank during the night and make two morning dives there before heading back to Freeport. The crew is quite good at moving things along, deploying a boatload of divers with considerable efficiency. We make our way to the down lines and pull ourselves to the reef. Once in the comparative cover of the mountainous corals, navigation becomes easier. A large school of snapper reveals my dive partner, internationally acclaimed author and underwater photographer, Jennifer Idle. Myriad species find themselves before our lenses, beginning with this tornado of snappers. The reef is a vibrant marine community populated by everything from tiny little fry to sandbar sharks, mantas and mobula rays. And this is a prime location for witnessing coral spawning. Each year, a week or so after the full moon in August, usually between 9 p.m. and midnight, several coral species here erupt into a mass spawning event. Gametes are ejected into the water column to mix and fertilize. 
and can start new coral colonies. At the beginning of our first dive, I settled into a small hollow to chill with the southern stingray. He finally tires of the paparazzi intruding on his downtime and leaves in a huff. A trunk fish noshes at the local salad bar. And clouds of small fry project a coruscation around the reef as they twinkle, twinkle like little stars. The bristle worm has an attack speed of only about two feet per hour, but since these fluffy critters can put a pretty good sting on you, they don't have to move very fast. As with every tropical reef system, you have your predators, and your farmers and grazers. Moray eels of various types can be seen peering from their nooks and crannies. The flower garden has more than its share of eels from the itty bitties to the big green ones. Jennifer finds one that looks longer than she is. We end the dive as it began with more snappers who let us get right up into their school. It's all very zen. They seem to know that they are safe and that we mean them no harm. Of course the fish don't know this, but they are under the watch of Noah. We meet once again with Emma Hickerson. Well, the mission for the Flower Garden Banks is to identify, protect, conserve and manage these marine resources in the Flower Garden Banks and in the region. Um, so uh, we have several facets of our research and monitoring team. Uh, we conduct research, facilitate research uh, with partners, but we also conduct the long-term monitoring of both the East and West Flower Garden Banks as well as Stetson Bank. We've got some of the longest running long-term monitoring projects in the world for coral reefs and coral communities. So we've been able to intimately talk about coral colonies uh, individually uh, and how they've survived over the last 25 years um, because of this long-term monitoring. We do repetitive photos uh, in each of the areas so we know these corals, we know these sponges and, and how they've uh, been reacting to different environments over the years. And then we do uh, random transects so that we can talk um, in general about the health of the reef, about the coral cover, about the other factors that are, um, that are driving the system the fish, uh, the other benthic invertebrates, etc. Sun sets over the deep rigs and we gear up for the first of two night dives. As always, diving after dark brings out new colors and species. Two Bastria cup corals lick out from the reef like tiny little flames. Urchins provide security for smaller species. And life on the reef goes on. the fling y'all. Ah. If you go home hungry, it is your own fault. It is definitely your fault. Throughout the day, the salon becomes a screening room as divers review their underwater photos and video. On January 17, 1992, 
President George H.W. Bush signed a document designating the Flower Garden Banks as our 10th National Marine Sanctuary. Stetson Bank was added four years later, and it's here that we make our final dives of this expedition. This is a place of exquisite beauty and biologic diversity. Wouldn't it be wonderful if our grandchildren and theirs could come to this place years hence and see what we have seen? Under new global direction and continued inspired stewardship of these reefs, perhaps they can. For a look at the future of the sanctuary, we give the last word to Emma Hickerson. In the coming months, we'll be releasing a proposed rule for sanctuary expansion. The more people who know about it, who learn about these special areas, um, who speak out about it, the more, um, the higher rate of success or possibilities of success of creating these places as new sanctuary areas. Um, so it's important for people to be engaged and, um, and speak out about these places. And it's, it's not only for protection of the fish but it's um, that people like to eat, but it's also protection of the habitats that these fish rely on. Um, the purpose of the sanctuary program is to protect these places not only for this generation for, but for generations in the future. And this is a step where people can actually have an impact themselves on the future of the habitats in the Gulf of Mexico. The Flower Garden Banks is a special place. When I first dove the Flower Garden Banks, I was stunned coming from an area um, that's known for its beautiful marine areas, Australia, and me thinking that the Gulf of Mexico, like many people, thinking of it as a big bathtub full of mud. It's far more than that. These extraordinary places like the coral reefs of the eastern flower garden banks that are home to whale sharks and sea turtles and manta rays and corals that are as big as cars, as far as you can see, all healthy, all thriving. Um, providing habitat for dozens of and hundreds of species of fish and hundreds of species of uh, invertebrates and other vertebrates. Um, it's, it's surprising. It's your National Marine Sanctuary. It's your coral reef. Houston has a coral reef, whether you realize it or not. It's one of the most spectacular places in the Caribbean and, and the general area in terms of coral reef areas. Not only are the coral reefs there, but we have all of these other deeper habitats that I hope that you um, get to learn about and love as much as I do. Seven dives were a good start, and we're about to pack up for a return trip. So Texas divers, next time somebody asks you, what's your favorite dive site in the Lone Star State? Just give them that 40 mile squint and a big smile and say, why? The Flower Garden, the National Reef of Texas. I'm Paul Cater Deaton, and I'll see y'all under the bubbles. <laughs>